G'day everyone and welcome to my round one AFL tips and predictions for 2023. Now, before we get started, this will not be a weekly series this year. This is just give you a little taster of what will be a series over on the members only section of the channel. So you can click the link in the description to become a member. All the tipping videos throughout the year weekly will be members only. So make sure you go and check that out and click the link in the description. I just thought because it was round one, I'm going to upload my round one tips and predictions. So, you know, spice it up a little. If you do want to join my tipping competition for this year, we had a real good turnout last year, then make Make sure you click the link in the description. If you are new, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's a few days, only two days away, and I couldn't be any more pumped. So let's get into the first game of the round. As always, no surprise, except for last year when we had Wednesday night for It's back to the traditional Thursday night, Richmond against Carlton at the MCG. Now, the Tigers and the Blues both have cases to win this game. For a, for a lot of years, it was just absolute Richmond domination year in, year out, but they're Pretty much as evenly matched as you'll ever see them this year. I think that both teams have very good capabilities to win this game. I think the Richmond midfield will be bolstered by Tim Taranto and Jacob Hopper, who when being at GWS never really got the chance to prove themselves on the ultimate big stage apart from the grand final. Look, don't get me wrong, I think Richmond are actually going to have a better year than Carlton this year. I think all round, they're better shaped. But there's just something about Carlton and winning the round one game like they did last year. It just bolsters the whole fan base for the year. And you can sort of just see that coming. Round one, the entire fan base is behind the Blues at the moment. They're ready to roll. They'll be 80 to 90,000 at the G. And I think Carlton are going to actually win this game by a small margin of 12 points. I think it'll be a really, really close contest. Not congested. I think just a really, really tough game of footy. And I think the likes of Cripps and Chera will dominate that midfield. And you've still got the twin towers of Harry Mackay and Charlie Kerno down there. I personally think the Blues are going to win this game. Coming in on Friday night, probably the best final I've ever seen in my lifetime. Bias aside from a 3-0 final, this is the best final I've ever seen. It was last year, it was the qualifying final, and they're back for a Friday night round one matchup. It's at the MCG, and it's Geelong who host Collingwood. Obviously, with the addition of guys like Jack Bowes, Ollie Henry, Tanner Bruin, Geelong have strengthened in areas where they have lost out on, such as Joel Selwood in that midfield. Now, Joel Selwood's mentality and leadership will never be able to be replaced, but I think they've done a serviceable job with what they can do. Now, Jeremy Cameron has actually stated that he's open to leaving the game at halftime to go to the hospital as his partner may be in labor at the time. Imagine what a dynamic that would bring if it's a close game at halftime and Jeremy Cameron is off to the hospital. Jeremy Cameron there or not, um, I think Geelong, they're the reigning premiers, they'll be unveiling their flag. Will they be unveiling their flag? I think they might do it at GMHBA, but they'll be on a high from their premiership. They'll be up and about. It'll probably be the biggest regular season crowd of the year. Um, maybe apart from Anzac Day, there'll be 90,000 there. It will be absolutely rocking. And I think the Cats experience, you know, Collingwood is still a young list. They had a lot of close wins last year. And um, we've got to say that, they're, you know, they're a very good team. There's an element of luck to that. And I think, and while Collingwood are very good on the big stage, they make it to a prelim and they only lost out by a point to the Swans. I think this is the Cats game to lose. And I'm going to go Geelong to win this game by eight points. Moving on to the first Saturday game, we have got a blockbuster. It will attract a sellout Marvel Stadium crowd. It's going to be North Melbourne who host West Coast. What an absolute game this is. It's 17th versus 18th from last year. Both teams looking to improve under Alistair Clarkson and Adam Simpson. Both these teams have also drafted exceptionally for the West Coast Eagles. Noah Long, Elijah Hewitt, Ruben Gimby, Campbell Chester. Still yet to play a game after injuring himself for a practice match last year and going on the inactive list all year. Oscar Allen was also on the inactive list along with Dom Sheeds last year. So there are a lot of new additions that will be slowly strained since West Coast Best 22 after a mess of a year last year. I think the Eagles have strengthened significantly this year. I think Jimby will be a walk-up star to that West Coast starting lineup. I think he'll boss that midfield. He's 190 centimetres. He's got a huge body and he's only 18, 19. I think he'll be fantastic. North Melbourne, they'll give debuts, I am assuming, to George Wardlaw and Harry Sheasel. I'm bullish about Sheasel. If he can start kicking goals from wherever, then um, he could do absolutely anything. Um, I think Sheasel could be a game changer. It's still a relatively weak North Melbourne forward line. I've got the experience in that midfield and forward line, but it's still relatively weak. Davies Uniac will be a big, big step up, but when I look at the two the two teams combined, on paper, I prefer West Coast, which is why I'm actually going to say West Coast win this game by 22 points and get their season off to a 1-0 start and, and be a bit bullish for the rest of the season. The next game is at the Adelaide Oval. It's going to be Port Adelaide who host the Brisbane Lions, a game I will actually be streaming along with the Friday night game, so make sure you tune in for this one. Um, 
this is one of the most underrated round one matchups of the round. I think it's going to be an absolute belter. Port Adelaide, the start of last season, 0 5. So they will be hungry, uh, hungrier than ever, to get off to a really good start. And I think they will. I think they're a, they're a very good side. And whether they win or lose, I think a good start and just a good performance is needed for the Port fans to believe. If they can even just lose by under 20 points to one of the major premiership fancies of this season, uh, I, I almost say that's a pass mark for Port Adelaide. I think they just need to get off to a really, really good start and give the fans some belief, give the coaches and and players some belief to know that they can put out a good season this year. But I do just think Brisbane are at a whole different level. The additions of Jack Gunston and Will Ashcroft are unbelievable. Um, I mean, you've got an all-Australian fullback, you've got an all-Australian midfield, you've got an all-Australian forward line. Brisbane are a scary unit this year, and they won't mess around in round one. They'll win by, I'll say, 20 points. I think it will be a comfortable win for the Lions, but I think Port Adelaide will put out a fight. I just think the Lions are far, far too good for the power. Coming into the first Saturday night game, it's going to be the MCG. It's going to be Melbourne who take on the Western Bulldogs. I think I cooked the dogs a bit too much in my season predictions, because when you think about it, They've added Liam Jones, they've added Rory Lobb, they've added some tall timber to either end of the ground. And I think that will be very, very valuable to them. I think that won't go unnoticed. I think Lobb will be a really good marking target as well as someone that can chop out for Tim English in the ruck. And I think Liam Jones will be a man of experience down in the back line. I think the dogs will be okay this year and I think they will pick up a fight this game. But I think the fight will be nowhere near enough. The Star State Melbourne lineup, I think. I think Brody Grundy and Max Gorn will um I think they'll obliterate. Um and, uh, Tim English is a very good ruckman and Rory Lobb is an okay deputy. But Grundy and Gorn and this isn't just for the Bulldogs, they'll obliterate every single ruck pairing they come up against this year. There's no one really close, maybe apart from Fremantle, but Gorn and Grundy are still at a different level. One will be rotating down the forward line, the other will be rotating into the ruck. I think getting Grundy actually sorts out one big forward problem of getting that tall forward down there that has such a high quality. Whether you have Brown and Grundy or Brown and Gorn down there at one time, I think they will be unstoppable this year in Melbourne for a large portion of the year, and that's what I'm going to tip them to go and win by five goals at the G in round one and get themselves off to the dream start for 2023. And the late Saturday night game kicks off from Gold Coast at Heritage Bank Stadium. What a horrific name that is. It's the Gold Coast Suns who host the Sydney Swans. Teams struggle to go to the Gold Coast. It's a weird atmosphere and the Swans are no different. The Swans are very often lose to the Suns on the Gold Coast, no matter how good the Swans are or how bad the Suns are or vice versa. I think it, form doesn't go into this. The Swans have just come off a grand final. Um, I think, look, it's round one. Anything can happen. I think the Suns will be really, really bullish for this year. And I think they're going to win this game by... Oh, I'll, go, I'll, go, I'll go 20 points where both teams score under 60. I think it's going to be a real low-scoring scrap. Um, I think it's going to be really congested. I think both midfields are really, really strong and there'll be a lot of tackles laid by the likes of Callum Mills and Chad Warner and uh, Took Miller and Noah Anderson, Matt Rowell. You know, you get the gist. I think the Suns will just be the better team on the day. I think their forward line will start to fire. You know, Levi Casbolt, maybe or Chol, Ben King finally into the Gold Coast side. And don't get me wrong, I think the Swans will have an okay year. I, th I think the Swans will have a good year. I've tipped them to make top four, but... For me, I think the Suns will just get the better on them on the day. And I think, you know, it's on the Gold Coast. It is a very hard place to go. Moving on to the Sunday games, we move to Giant Stadium where GWS host the Adelaide Crows. Now, the Giants have got a new coach. And while they do have some serviceable, serviceable experience, such as Cornelio, Whitfield, Perryman, I just don't really see them getting off to a good start this year. Um, I, th I think the Crows are the better side. I think the Crows will rise up the ladder. I think Adelaide get a good job done here. I'm going to say they're going to get it done by 34 points. I think it's going to be a convincing win for the Crows. They're going to go out. They're going to show their guns. You know, Rory Lee and Ben Keys. They'll be, uh, I think Keys will kick some snacks for fun while getting the pill for fun. I think Lee will be laying heaps of crunching tackles and uh, just being that real bullish midfielder that we know him so well for. And you can't underestimate the Giants, but with a new coach, he'll, it, Adam Kingsley will take a while to adjust to things. And that chicken burst practice match, they did look very promising. But when it comes to round one, I think the Crows will be the side on the day that get up, get up about, and uh, get the result down in Sydney. The Channel 7 time slot on the Sunday at the MCG. It's going to be Hawthorne and Essendon, the line in the sand. It's going to be an absolute cracker, I think. Um, a cracker between two mediocre teams. That's why it's going to be a cracker. It's going to be really, really sluggish. The quality of football might not be high but I think one team will come out in the end as the victors and they'll be happy with that and I think that's why one of these two teams could actually have an okay year this year because they're playing each other and if they get around one win 
They'll be optimistic for the rest of the year, and especially in these first four or five rounds. Personally, I think the Hawks are the better team than the Bombers. Like, I know Hawthorne are a lot of people's wooden spoon tips, but I just think, to be honest, they've got a more organised list than Essendon, and they're a more organised football club. Sam Mitchell, this is his second year in the job, and while Brad Scott's obviously coached AFL teams before, this is only his first year in the job. I think Essendon's list, if you actually look at it, is probably worse than Hawthorne's when it comes to putting them all together. The ruck department could be an issue for the Hawks, don't get me wrong, I think Sam Draper shits on Meek and Reeves, but I think it will be the Hawks that get the job done. I think they are the better team. I think Cam McKenzie and Jai Newcomb and Carl Amon in the midfield will have a field day. James Sicily will hold down the back line. He'll have a very good game. I reckon he'll take 10, 11 intercept marks. I think the Hawks are actually going to get the job done here by... I'll go a close one. I'll go eight points because I don't think they're that good, but I, I think Hawthorne will win. And the last game on the Sunday, I cannot wait for this one. Freo Footy's back. It's the Saints and it's the Dockers at Marvel Stadium. Absolutely pumped for this one. Um, I mean, what a contest this is going to be. St Kilda, look, a lot of people are saying not to read into the injuries, but how can you not read into the injuries? The injuries are so significant for St Kilda. They've got 14 players on the injury list, and some of those include some best 23 players, such as Tim Membry, Seb Ross. Like, they're very, very good players, Jack Billing. St Kilda are obviously worse off with these injuries, and I think they're significantly worse off with these injuries. I think Tim Membry is a pillar in that forward line, and I don't think it will just be Max King that will be able to fire as the tall timber in the forward line. I think, I think Ross Lyon will have to find an alternative to Membry, which won't be anywhere near up to Membry's caliber because I think he's a fantastic player. However, on the other front, Fremantle have been extremely lucky with injuries. There was a few little rumors earlier throughout the week that O'Meara would miss, that Tracy might miss, uh, that Frederick or Walters might miss. They've all been cleared. Walters is really the only one still at doubt. Um, but I think Fremantle had their best 22 out. Fife, Tracy, Tabaga, Amis, it doesn't matter who they select in the forward line. They will want to stay as a unit. We've done a lot of work over the offseason with our forward line staying as a unit. And I just really hope that does pan out in round one. I hope Nat Fife, who will obviously play, can pair up with a Luke Jackson, a Josh Tracy, a Tabaga, and Amos. The midfield, I think, will get off to a cracking start. Look, no Seb Ross is also a big loss. Hey, look, Jack Steele, he's a, he's a fantastic player. He's a brown low fantasy, but... Fremantle's midfield won't be messed with by many teams in the competition this year, even the best. I mean, it's unbelievable. Sarong, Brayshaw, O'Meara. We've said it so many times. I think the back six will uh, shut down St Kilgore's ability to score with the weakened forward line. I think the Dockers, unbiasedly, I'm actually going to go them to win by 35 points and get off to a really, really good start to the season. And I'm sorry to Saints fans because I do like Saints fans. And I, I'm, I'm bullish about the Saints this year. I think they'll actually have a pretty good year. But uh, yeah, I think the Dockers are the far better side in this occasion. Thank you all for watching this video. As I've already said, become a member to watch my weekly tipping videos throughout the year by clicking the link in the description. You can also join my footy tipping comp by clicking the link in the description. And please hit that subscribe button because there'll be an abundance of content coming throughout the season and leading up to the season. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and like the video. And leave a comment down below. What are your thoughts on these tips? What would you change? And who do you think is going to win this round? Thank you all for watching and I will see you all next time. Cheers.